Hello, I'm uh, going to just show people how to get into Packet Radio pretty easily. So, uh, I've kind of recently gotten into it pretty much. Uh, the program I want to be using today uh, is Easy Term and Sound Modem. I've already, got, I've already got it installed, but if you need to find it, I, I use DuckDuckGo. But uh, here you go. With the web page, it's this UZ7HO. Uh, he's got a bunch of stuff devoted to packet radio. Uh, supports a bunch of modes. The important one is the 1200 AFSK, which is the traditional 1200 baud packet. Uh, you, at the very least, you will need this sound modem zip file and that easy term 49 zip file. Uh, these other two programs, Checkers and Chess, are a way to play Checkers and Chess over Packy Radio. I have done it once. It works. Uh, plan on doing it more in the future. And there's some user guides here as well. But it's pretty simple to get into and get started. The user guides do help somewhat. But uh, pretty much what you need to get into Packet Radio is... You just need an audio interface between your computer and your transceiver, your radio. You need to be able to get the, radio, the audio from the radio into the computer and from the audio from the computer into the radio. Uh, getting it out of the radio is pretty easily. Uh, in my case, I'm just using an external speaker jack and running a cable into a little uh, sound card dongle. But uh, you need to... So decoding typically works okay. Uh, transmitting, you'll either need to build or buy. I'm using a Rig Blaster, a sound card interface. Uh, basically, all you're trying to do is key up your radio, uh, get it to transmit, and pass the audio into it. That's, that's basically all you have to do. I'll boot up Sound Modem and Easy Term. So these are the two programs. Uh, you want this setting right here to be the AFSK AX.25 1200 baud. Under settings, uh, we'll go to devices first, and I'll just show you. So I have a uh, just a little one of them little cheap Amazon USB audio devices. It's got a speaker in and out, and yeah, pretty pretty simple. Um, about the only thing that I think you need to click here is the color waterfall. Well, you don't even need to, but it's nice to have this color waterfall. Uh, you, If your radio is unsquelched, you want this color to be bluish green. You don't want it to be orange, yellow, or red. Uh, that means your audio is too loud. Additionally, you'll need to select a push-to-talk port or a Vox port, depending on what you're using, but uh, in my case with my Rig Blaster, I'm using a push-to-talk port. Uh, you can find this in Device Manager for your particular device. Uh, this is a pretty rough intro just to show packet radio really. But yeah, there, there's the driver. Uh, you find your COM port, you got your Rig Blaster, COM4, and you just select it there. There you go. So just click OK and you go to settings and then modems. You can generally, I think everything through here is pretty well default. You can just about leave everything to default. Uh, the only thing I would change is this TX delay. I think the default is 250. You might want to set that to 350 if you're using a mobile radio or, or a base station radio. If you're using an HT, a, hand, uh, a handheld radio, uh, you might want to increase that to something like 500 or 600 milliseconds. So there's that. Easy term is pretty easy. Uh, you go to once you boot it up, you just go to settings, station setup, uh, put in your your call sign here, and then put dash one here for your mailbox. Uh, you do have your own personal mailbox, uh, peop, so other people can connect to if you need to. Here's uh, beacons and so forth. You can put that in there if you want. You don't have to. This is a Digipeter uh, that will actually will show you. We'll show the BBS. And then I think this is also default, but make the pack length. If you're on VHF, like two meters, which is what I'm on, uh, 145.010 megahertz in my area here in Johnson City, Tennessee, 
uh, you can make 128 right there. You have to pause the recording there. So here with the pack length, you uh, 128 is about standard for two meter packet. For HF packet, you want to go down to about 60. You can go up to I think 200 and something. Uh, the shorter you make it, the shorter you make the packet length, the more reliable the connection is. So if you if you have a particularly noisy path like on HF or a weak like a really weak two meter signal, you might want to go lower than 128. Have, if you have a really strong signal or a moderately strong signal, 128 is fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and talk about the beacon. You can beacon your setup uh, pretty much if you just leave your computer up and running. Uh, all day you can have this thing beacon out whenever you want to whatever interval uh, through whatever digipeter that you might have in the area or you can do simplex I mean you can do simplex packet so to do the beacon the text you go under file edit beacon and I've already got one in here. This is my uh, KO4OTL, my call sign. I'm transmitting on that this frequency. That's my personal personal mailbox. If you want to connect to it, you can edit these other ones. You don't necessarily have to. So, if you want, if you know the call sign of what you want to connect to, and you know the frequency. So, in my case, I have. Uh, I manage a Digipeter and BBS on 145.010 megahertz. It's on Miller's Knob in Sulphur Springs, Tennessee, uh, with decent coverage across Washington County. So what you do uh, is you can just go ahead and connect, and you type the call you wish to connect to. So I'm going to type in KO4OTL, put a dash 3. Uh, if you want to save that, you can just press that plus and you can get it from the drop down. I've already saved it previously. And then you just hit connect. Uh, we'll note that if you have trouble connecting and you know you have a strong signal, uh, you need to check your transmit audio. You need to make sure your transmit audio is not too loud. You want it, you can adjust it, uh, adjust it as high as it'll go, and then see what it sounds like and then back it off because or because as you as you transmit too loudly you'll start clipping in the transmitter um, and that'll mess up your packet signal you want it to be not particularly loud but also not quiet but just kind of back it off to what sounds like a, a reasonably loud signal and then back it off a little more uh, with packet it's better to have a slightly too quiet signal than a slightly too loud signal so I'm going to click connect here. So I don't I don't have the the speaker output, but uh, you'll notice in sound modem that it will give data traffic. I meant to note uh, this is the Digipeter actually. It is beaconing. I've set it for every 10 minutes, and it has this short text. Uh, the if for anybody watching or monitoring that is, it says the KO4OTL-2 Digipeter. The BBS is is my call sign dash three and we have a ka node is uh, my call sign dash seven I'll explain the ka node later and then you have the raw data but this is the sort of clean sheet so it gives you a list of commands B J K L R and S if you don't know just type in help hit enter and it will give a full listing of commands and describe them it takes it a minute because we're running 1200 baud here. All right, so this is all the commands. B is by, which means we immediately disconnect, so don't do that unless you're done. Uh, J is all the call signs that this BBS has heard. So we'll hit J. So whoever has connected to it. So it has heard itself, the Digipeter, dash two. It's heard K4DWQ's mailbox. Uh, I know the I know that guy and his mailbox beaconed. Uh, this is him connecting to the BBS. This is my mailbox and then this is me connected now and it gives a, 
uh, date and time and 24 hour time. All right, we had some technical difficulties, but at any rate, so I've shown how to get connected and then now, so we've listed the messages that are available. I had some issues with connecting. Uh, one note I will make is that your transmit audio level needs to be kind of low. Uh, or, you know, if it sounds good to you, turn it off, not turn it off, back it off a little more. Uh, I was having some trouble. Uh, what happens is that on the other end, the uh, modem will not, it, it'll start, it, it won't play well with a, uh, loud packet signal needs to be kind of needs to be good and smooth and quiet so to read messages such as message 3 here uh, by K4DWQ on the uh, 147120 repeater you do R space 3 to read a message it'll send and then it will print it back to you And if you notice errors in, in the grammar and formatting, that's just operator error. That is not the uh, program. So <laughs> just keep that in mind. But anyway, so that's uh, David's message. And then uh, if you want to read other messages, you just do R space uh, and the message number as shown up here. So we'll hit help again. If you want to send a message, you hit S and then space call sign. So I will, and I will, I will demonstrate two things at once. So K is to kill or delete a message. So I sent a message to Dave uh, from me to K4DWQ, uh, and then there it beaconed again. That's that's the beacon. What you do uh, to delete a message. You type K, excuse me, and the message number, which I believe is 6. There you go. Yeah, message 6. So I will kill or delete message 6. Message deleted. Now to send a message, we'll just do it again. S space call sign, K4DWQ. You send it, and then it prompts you for a subject. We'll just say hello there. You hit enter, and then this is where you enter the body of the message. So the way this works is that you can type lines, and you, when you hit enter, it just goes to another line in the message. So I'll just say, uh, good to meet you on packet radio. Uh, you hit, so I hit enter. This is a good thing to do, even if old-fashioned. <laughs> Haha. Hit enter. So that'll be two separate lines. And then to end the message, you can either do Control Z or you can. Uh, it describes it right here. You can end with either doing the control Z command or you type forward slash EX we'll do that forward slash EX hit enter the message is saved and if you want to double check you hit L there's our message from me to K4DWQ and if you want to double check with the contents read 8 There you go. So that's a little bit of the commands that you can do. Uh, and, and ultimately, just always remember to hit help. It will uh, help you out. So you can list the categories. You can get into a lot of different things. But, but at any rate, you can uh, – that's, a, I think, a decent intro. And start sending messages to people. Uh, you can also send bulletins to everybody. So I will show that real quick. So we'll go back up here. So the ST is the type of message 
Uh, PY is personal. Uh, B is bulletin. If you send a bulletin, you do S uh, all. That's how you do that. So anyway.